so Matt, with the LME416 getting ready to go into Rift, I see we're working on some rockers right now. So um, rockers are kind of one of those things. Why don't you like tell us a little bit about like what exactly is the purpose of a rocker and when and why should you do a trunnion upgrade on it? So the big basis on doing a trunnion upgrade, uh, and when we say trunnion, what we mean by that is the bearing that the rock arm actually articulates on. So what it rotates on. And the basis of where we're going with all this. So you have your camshaft, it lifts the lifters, pushes a push rod, articulates the rocker arm, which opens your valve. Whenever you upgrade your camshaft, you put in different, even just minutely larger lifters, start to, you can potentially overextend your rocker arms. Um, the factory rocker arms only have a limited amount of travel that they can go. So a lot of times you can put a camshaft in um, and you won't overextend them. But a lot of times with a larger camshaft, you can overextend your rocker arms. And then what can happen is the fulcrum that the um, rocker arm articulates on, you can damage it or even potentially break it and drop a rocker arm and then you're losing a cylinder. And it's also gonna scatter the little needle bearings that are in there throughout your motor and everything like that. Um, I've dealt with this multiple times on LT LS and LT motors over the years. So the reason you do it is you give it, whenever your rocker arm is articulating, you have a small amount that it can go. So whenever you upgrade it, you have a further distance that that rocker arm can articulate. Um, so by doing this, it allows the rocker arm to articulate further, especially with a larger camshaft, maybe a little bit taller uh, lifters and that nature. And then it especially happens at higher RPM intervals. So spirited driving, racetrack driving, uh, road course driving, anything that's gonna keep you higher in your RPM range. So you're gonna be taxing or finding the limits of how far your rocker arms can go. So it's really, really great to upgrade and do a trunnion upgrade on your rocker arms. Um, so that way you do not have that problem. You do not run into that issue um, because you can overextend your factory rocker arms. Now you're specifically, you're actually assembling them yourself. You can get pre-built Yes. You know, Pre-built, you know, pre-loaded rockers. Pre-assembled, yes. Um, so what, I mean, is there an advantage to doing, a, like doing it yourself or is it, or is it just a money thing? Like it's cheaper this way? It, it's cheaper, but I mean, that's mainly the only difference um, because that's more parts. When you buy them assembled, you're paying for the rocker arms and the trunnion upgrade right. kit itself. So when you already have a good set of factory rocker arms, it's, they've got good bodies on them, mm -hmm. then you can just press out your old bearings and upgrade the trunnion kit itself. Okay. And so especially there's no point in buying a whole nother set of rocker arms um, with the upgraded trunnions when we can just get the trunnion right. kit and do it ourselves. So it's really just the convenience of not having to do that. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's And some people either don't know how to do it or haven't ever done it. Right. And, um, and it's just the ease of being able to just buy a set that's already had the upgraded bearings and the trunnion upgrade done, done to it. Right. So, but with this, we've got good solid rocker arms that we can work with. And then all we're doing is pressing out the GM factory bearings and then, um, and then pressing in our uh, BTR um, trunnion upgrade kit. Cool. So the next step after this then uh, have you already done the measurements for the push rods no, yet? No, actually is that I have not. So that's going to be the big thing is I wanted to go ahead and get this. This is the last thing we have really have to do in the machine shop area or machining area. So I just wanted to get this done. Mm. Um, at that point, yeah, we're actually going to get the rocker arms on there and then we're going to take our measurement for our push rod length. Okay. And then we can get those ordered. And, um, and then at that point, once they're on order, we're going to go ahead and get the engine itself set in the car. It's exciting. We're one step closer with Rift. Yep, sure. So. Are. All right. Well, well let's uh, leave you to that. And uh, yeah, let's uh, <laughs> get this engine in. I'm putting a cam in. I'll do my valve springs, but a lot of people, I mean, what, would you say, Adam, it's kind of an overlooked thing? People are like, oh, yeah, my rock arms will be fine. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys say it's very oh, crucial? Yeah. yeah.
Well, see the the lockouts. These are pressed into the end of the rocker. Well, those are just a little stamped piece of steel, and it keeps all those bearings around this so what little fulcrum. But see, <laughs> hold, flip it over and hold the cap on there. See how when he rotates this intersection, flip it over. So oh, you want to see the the see stops. how it stops it. You can over tax your rocker arms, and then what'll happen is it'll rip this cap open, and then the cap will come out of the ends of the rocker arms, and then it'll spit all the needle oh bearings God. out. Yeah. I've worked on multiple cars where guys like, hey, my car started running really rough. I'm like, were you doing some spirited driving or racing at the track? Yeah, yeah I was I was running it hard. Yeah. Then literally, you pop it off, and the rocker arm's sitting in there, and it's come apart, it's like and all those needle bearings are sitting in your oil pan. Yeah, you're like, look at that. The I literally, I had a, I had a C6. Comparison in between, like, what's actually holding the bearings in it now. Yeah. It's a fully like, caged they're bearing. In, they're encased. Oh, wow. Versus not having That's an open side. That's how they come factory? Right here, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's a fully caged bearing now. What's uh, not, what wasn't clearing, like what's different now as so, far as dimension? The 6.6 .6 liter does not have the side block um, accessory mount holes. So LME came out with an accessory bracket that bolts into the engine block in the, in the spot where it's main cap locations. See, these are where it goes into down here where my phone. Yep. This is your, Stud, those are the the studs into the oh, see, sides yeah. of the main caps yeah. inside the engine block. Okay. So this whole accessory bracket, but I opened up that window right there. Yeah. And then that way it could pass behind it. Now you did uh, you plumbed the methanol stuff. You finished all that up earlier. Yeah? That's all done. Here's the gonna be the hookup for the methanol right here. That's cool. Nice. And it's pretty stealthily hidden back there. Like it's yeah. And then I took the wheel liners down. Uh -huh. I ran it underneath the body, in between the side skirt and the body, and then went up and over the wheel liner here, and then came out right here. I'm, I'm excited to see that, like, it's it's so cool to finally see the pieces of this coming together and seeing, you know. Oh yeah, this 100% is my favorite part. Like, I love, I love tearing, I love anything that has to do with heavy line work, whether it's tearing an engine out, you know, tearing an engine apart and rebuilding it, or putting one together. I love, I love heavy line work. So yeah, this is the fun part, putting it all back together and then firing up and seeing all your hard work yeah. come to life. I, I can't wait to hear what this thing sounds like with our cam and there's, there's so many cool things going on right now. One of the reasons, unfortunately, we've, is we've been having a hard time covering this process is because yeah. on the left Two. over there, we have the, the 720S and the CAZ06 both getting our very first like wicked exhausts that came in because PRI, PRI is this next week and so we've got Riff's engine going in 720 getting exhaust CA getting exhaust and so it's been just an absolutely like crazy day uh, which unfortunately has mean that it's meant that uh, it's been a little bit tough to film this but I think out of all of them this is actually the one that I'm the most excited about because I mean, we're trying to break a record. With it, We've so. seen it from the beginning. Too. Yeah, like it, it's been, it's been our, it's kind since, of been our since it's infancy. Home. Yeah, yeah. So there it is. We're gonna get there. What more do you have left? She's in. I just let, set it down. Oh, oh nice. So, so it's it's on the mounts and everything. Now. Yep. It's, it's on the mounts. Nice. So do you? Have you already like measured the, for the push rods and no, everything? No, I or? haven't. I'm gonna get this out of my way and do a couple other things. I'm gonna finish putting the transmission bolts in and then then I know for the fact that she's actually mounted in, then I'll I'll go ahead. But I still gotta put a couple transmission mount or transmission bolts in it. Um, I got a few started on the bottom and ran all the way down so it sucked the transmission and the engine together. And then that way it would be good for whenever I set it down but I gotta do the rest of the bell housing all the way around. 
So and after then, that, uh, then everything from basically right here back is done. Yep. Neat. Do you think it'll come back for one of our uh, one-piece drive shafts? Because it is still running that two-piece, right? Uh, if I understand correctly, he is going to come back for... He's getting one of our Wicked intake, uh, cold air intake kits. And then um, I think he is also as well going to come back and get the one-piece drive shaft. And he's going to put some better tires on it. And then um, we, I'm pretty sure he'll be around for our next track day. That'll be exciting. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to bet you this thing does nine even on these tires. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll They were s with the with measuring for zero lash, the lifters, and the required collapse distance that they those lifters required. Yeah. Um, we ended up getting 7.90. 7.90. Seven point nine zero. Seven point nine zero. Three eighths diameter chromoly push rods. Yeah. So ours, do, do you know what ours were? Seven point eight six zero. Oh really? Mm -hmm. hmm. So what's causing the like difference there? It's a difference in the blocks. It could be a difference in the cylinder heads. It could be a difference in multi -factor. The big difference yeah. is the the lifters. The yeah. well, the block is the exactly camshaft. Yeah. yeah. Yes, actually, the the engine block that's in here and the factory engine block that's in our CT5V have the exact same deck height. Okay. I found that out. Thanks. Um, it's that I do not know. <laughs> I, that could be another reason. It could yes. have a large base circle. Yes. Uh, it could have a larger base circle on each of the cam lobes. I didn't think about that. Yep. Okay, cool. So there's a lot of factors. That's why it is extremely important to take a correct and accurate push rod length measurement yeah. cool. when ordering push rods. The push rods worked. They worked. Got it. Oh, we have correct spec, everything's torqued down. Yeah. Um, valve lash is set. Okay. Crush on lifters is set. Nice. So we're so, getting really close. Yeah. Um, we huh. We yeah. might be firing it today. Today? Today. No way. Yeah. So we're just going to fire it up to check mechanicals. Um, the smooth boost won't be hooked up, the reflex won't be hooked up, the meth won't be hooked up. Yeah. It's just purely to check yeah. mechanicals of the engine. Make sure we don't have any fuel leaks, make sure we don't have any coolant leaks, make sure oil pressure's good, make sure everything's all good. No, I'm excited. Me and Nick were talking about it, so. Cool. But we have to get these valve covers modified, we have to get them on the car, we have to make sure the rest of our wiring's good. Yeah. Um, so. We shall see. Yeah. Okay, so these are the valve covers mm -hmm. for... So I had to clearance them for where the injectors come out for the port system. Oh. And okay. then the coil stands were too tall. They were another quarter inch taller. And the bolts and the tops of the ignition cools were hitting the fuel rail for the port system. So now we cut them down, tapped them, um, uh, smoothed them, cut them down, smoothed them, Retap them all the way to the base of the ignition or to the valve cover, uh -huh. and then we had to clearance for the fuel injectors where they go down into the port oh, plates. Man. So now that's all done, so it goes underneath the fuel rails and it clearances to the injectors. That's so now so officially. Were these not originally LT4? Yes, port? actually, they are, but they were not for port injection. So now, okay. our valve covers fit. And well, actually are, looking at it... We're a big fan of fitting valve covers here. Um, 
But the big news is we're probably firing Rick today. Today? Today. Holy crap. That's awesome. That's, that's super exciting. We want to check out the mechanicals of the engine. Right. And then that's purely what it's going to be. But so, we will be able to fire it up in here. It's uh, probably not going to run great, but without, you know, any kind no, of... No, it should run great. It Do we have, a, like, a base map for it? Nick already does. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So we will actually potentially get to hear a proper first fire of this thing yeah. today. Wow. That, that's exciting. Step is to get it on the dyno.